Okay guys, Justin here, American Mustang School. And this is the second video. This will be level two, sacred art, horsemanship, and the five levels to practice. Uh, again, if you want anything in life, practice. That's what it takes. So we want to establish communication with cinnamon uh, to develop the relationship, you know, which is horsemanship, horse-human relationship. I want to develop a connection with her uh, develop a conscious awareness in me because uh, she's already got a conscious awareness in her. She's watching everything I do. She's taking in information and she's responding to that, you know, cause and effect. So I want to present what I expect and um, be willing to make changes uh, to get the most desirable results. So uh, that's what's going to cause transition from where we are to where we want to be. Uh, in other words, transformation. Too. So we're transitioning from not understanding this individual to understanding. She's getting the same thing, not understanding me, the human, to developing an understanding. And these laws of nature help us do that very efficiently and effectively. So I'll get started. What I like to do is what I call a five-part series. It's a series of five questions that I'll ask any and every horse to get a deeper understanding of that individual and allow them to get a deeper understanding of me. So these laws of nature that come in, I'll just go over a few of them, otherwise it'd be a real long video, but law of compensation. Um, it takes the time it takes to develop this relationship. You know, the, the law of cause and effect. I'm going to do something, think and do something, and I'm gonna become. She's gonna think and do something, and she's gonna become. In this relationship, we're going to become that together. I'm willing to change to present what it is I expect. She's obviously going to pick up on what I'm presenting and make the change. Now, if I open the door for the change of comfort rather than discomfort, then that's going to be evident in her reflections of her body, what she's thinking. So for her to draw to me just then and rub her head on me, that, that couldn't have been timed or trained any perfectly. That's an outward, outward reflection in her body that I want to see in this relationship. She looks to me for you know, comfort. So that's, that's, again, law of polarity. Discomfort, comfort. You know, basically the same thing, just different degrees. You know, law of vibration. We're going to change in breathing. We're going to change in muscles. We're going to change in thinking and, and action. Those are all law of vibration rhythm, energy conservation, all these things are going to become apparent in these series of five questions that I ask her. I just want to point out that breathing is very important in this exercise. This is one thing that you'll see horses do. They'll take a deep breath, they'll relax their body, their heart rate, all of that starts to get back into harmony or agreement. So anytime she has mental tension, physical tension, the brain monitoring the body, all of that has to be in agreement. So if she's restricted in the mind, you know, scared of me or doubt, you know, confused, uh, maybe developing some anxiety or fear, those are restrictions in her mind that cause tensions in her body. Her heart will respond differently. Brain's monitoring that. Her breathing, her, her muscles in her body will constrict rather than expand and relax. Those are things that I'm conscious, those are the reflections that I'm consciously developing an awareness to. You know, you have a sense of it, but you got to get in there in conscious contact to get an understanding. You know, deeper understanding. That's what I'm talking about. The sense and understanding are balancing. You know, I can have a sense of something, but I don't understand it. These five questions help us do that. So I want to utilize some equipment. You know, I use a lead rope and halter, and uh, it's just a, an extension of my body at this point, but it's dependent on less and less as time goes on to where I could just ask her without a rope. So I'd like to start soft, increase the intensity, and ask her to back up nice and quiet. And we'll do two steps and then relax. So pressure is a question, release is a thank you. And what I'm finding out is how much pressure, how much rhythm, you know, the vibration. Am I breathing? Am I tense? Are my shoulders high? Or are they relaxed? Am I thinking in a hurry? Or am I calm and relaxed, thinking smooth, quiet thoughts? you know, and moving fluidly rather than bracy and rigid and robotic. Because whatever I present to her, she's going to give me feedback. 
And that's what I would like to see. So I'll just ask her for two more steps to get out there a little bit further. So we'll go ahead and go one step backwards and we'll just increase this intensity of this question. One step, two steps and relax. And uh, take a deep breath, relax your shoulders, relax your hips, relax your legs, you know, loosen up those knees, don't be so rigid. I want her to be fluid, I gotta be fluid. So I'd like to just point to my right, ask her to go to the right. If that's all that's needed, that's all I'll do. Relax that arm. And then just watch her walk around. You know, this series of questions, there's five of them. I'll ask her to back up, move to my right or left. So two and three are interchangeable. As she's walking around, I'm watching her walk. So I get a, an idea of how she's comfortable in walking. What's her head set like? What's her tail set like? What's the distance between her front legs and her back legs? What's her reach on her stride? How's my equipment look? Looks a little too far forward. That's okay, we're gonna make some adjustments. All of these things come out in this, asking these questions in this five part series. So the fourth question would be to ask her to come to me. You know, how do I know if she even wants to come to me unless I ask her? Fifth question would be ground tie. So she asked if she could come, so I'll just ask her to keep going. I'd like to change directions. So we, we've only asked her two questions. Back up, go to the right. I had to ask her to go to the right because she asked if she could come in. She's asking again. I'll just ask her to keep going. So I want to change direction. I want to reach in front of this hand and just simply point the other direction. She moves out. I get to look at this side of her body. How does she move in this direction? Is she comfortable with me on this side of her body? Is she comfortable with me on her right side or left side? Which one is she more comfortable with? All of these things get revealed in this relationship. She just got a relaxation, tension release in the mouth, relaxation in the body. This is good. Now I want to ask her to come forward. So I just point at that hip, create some draw back up, stop, ground tie, rubber to a stop, take a deep breath. Drop your shoulders, relax your legs, your hips, your legs. She's gonna do this when you get up on her back, same thing. I'll ask her to move in directions and I'll feel her underneath me moving. And then I'll come to a stop, relax my body, which is a body response of relaxation. So we can trigger that in ourselves. We can trigger that in our horse. It takes practice. So you get five questions. Backwards, left or right, forward, ground tie. Each question reveals information. How fast, how much, how much pressure, rhythm. All of these things start to unfold about this individual because they're all different. On a scale of one to 10, she may be a two asking these questions. I go get another horse, they might need a four or five. Uh, if you use a four or five on this horse, it's, it's too much pressure. And then Restriction in the mind starts to come because the anxiety gets there, you know, like she's anticipating something because you're too fast, too much pressure. It's getting loud. It's like yelling at her. How would we feel if somebody was yelling at us to, to do things? You know, it's like if I ask my daughter, you know, will you brush your teeth? Will you vacuum your room? Will you make your bed? And I just back those questions up and they're, and they're a little loud and they're, they're overbearing and it gets overwhelming for her. It's the same thing with our horses. It's the same thing with us. So whatever we think and do, we become. So if we're thinking in a hurry, or doing in a hurry, all the time, horse is gonna think and do in a hurry. But if we slow it down, you know, have a start and a stop, have an evaluation period. Right here, this ground tie is an evaluation period. I would like to ask her to just trigger a body response of relaxation. Take a deep breath, relax. Based on the individual horse will determine how long you need to ground tie and relax. Some horses self-regulate pretty quick. Some horses you've got to allow the time it takes. That's the law of compensation. The vibrations have to slow down. The processes have to catch up. You know, she has to process the information that just came in. Then some horses will evaluate how much energy they need to conserve mentally and physically. If we're hammering on them, pounding on them, creating restriction in the mind, tension in the body, they may start to withdraw from us to conserve their energy because they're burning a lot of energy 
based on what we're presenting to them. So we want to slow that down, get it into harmony, balance. Um, those are the things that we're consciously developing an awareness to in ourselves and our horses. So these laws of nature are uh, very important. So you just dim, I just demoed five part series, series of five questions. Five is transition from where you are to where you want to go. It's transformational as well. That's what the number five represents. You know, it's like you got five fingers, take in, five fingers, give out. You're breathing in, breathing out. It's taking, receiving. It's, it's giving, receiving. Uh, those are very important in understanding how to develop a relationship. You don't want to take information from her and, and receive that and give information to her. And then it's a feedback loop. And it's that way in life, in, in all five areas of your life, your health, your wealth, your happiness, your spirituality, you know, your relationships, all of those things you focus on main areas of your life to become better, become more efficient, become more effective. So this is level two. This was established communication. And this is a basic little video just to show you. There's other things you can add into this, take away from it. You know, if a horse has never been saddled, I'll ask these questions and introduce them to the pad, to the saddle, and then put that on their back. It's always asking because I'm developing a unique relationship between she and I. I want her to know being with me is the safest place on the planet because I invited her from the wild. She's a once wild Mustang horse into the human element. And I want her to feel as comfortable with me as she would have felt out there. In fact, I'd like to increase it because think of it this way, guys. She's getting to do something she otherwise would not get to do. See, out there in the wild, she's just fine. Eating, pooping, procreating, uh, living the best life that, that she would ever live. If we properly invite her into the human element, she gets to feel different feelings. She gets to think different thoughts than she would ever would out there. So she gets to feel love. She gets to feel kindness. She gets to feel a part of your growth or my growth. I'll just own it. She gets to feel a part of my growth, my development, my understanding, my sense, increase my senses, you know, smell, taste, touch, all of those senses that we, we possess as humans. She gets to be a part of helping me develop those into a higher consciousness or a deeper understanding. So what a reward, right? It's like, wow, this little being gets to ascend in consciousness too, because she's developing an awareness to something she otherwise would not have got. Now that's a polarity scale. Some of these horses are brought in and they're not properly taken care of. They're not properly given the opportunity to ascend in consciousness in a positive way. They get the negative downside. They get that polarity. You know, that, that's not what we want. That's not what they want. Uh, are, are we going to make mistakes? Of course. And she gets to see and gets to feel what we feel when we do make a mistake and we want to course correct and become better. That's that 360 degree perspective of one thing that we talk about in other videos. It's like, okay, we can look at when I put a bridle on this horse that does not have metal in it, I'm not going to put metal in her mouth. We can just focus on that one thing and look at it from a lot of different perspectives. Yeah, I would never want to cause pain or fear into my horse to force submission. So I took away the possibility of putting a metal bit in her mouth and ever making a mistake that I would regret. So I just took it out of the equation. You think of things in equation and plug in variables to equal an outcome. I don't have a metal bit in her mouth. I'm never going to yank on a rein so hard that it, you know, cuts her tongue or, or cuts her lips or causes so much restriction in her mind where she doubts that I'm going to do it again or has a doubt that I might do it again. It's like, man, I don't know. This guy, he hurt me pretty bad. And, and it could have been a sheer accident. She jumped and, and, and I yanked the, the rein to balance myself. A lot of people do. That's a mistake. We don't want to balance on the reins. If the horse makes a quick lunge forward, I would rather take the time it takes to ask her the question to get the issue resolved. Not force pain on top of whatever reason was to cause her to jump forward, which was the effect. So it's like adding fuel to a fire. I don't want to create something bigger whenever I can take that energy and transmute it in a different direction uh, efficiently and effectively to create draw to me for comfort. 
So that's what this level two does. It starts to establish, hey, I want to ask you some questions because we're going to form a relationship, a deeper understanding of each other. I'll never intentionally hurt you. I'll never force you to comply. I want to create willingness in you to want to be with me. And then you can test it, guys. You can, you can actually test and they'll give you a real visual of what it is. So if I asked her to back up without a rope, and it just starts soft and increase the intensity of the movement or vibration in this finger. And she starts to see that. And then she backs up. And then we release as a thank you. And then we ask her to move in a direction. We just point and give her a little kiss. And then she moves in a direction. She comes around just like she always would. And then we push that hip and call her back to us and create draw. And then rub her to a stop. Let her know, yes, that's exactly what I was asking you. You're a high-minded uh, individual. You, you can think. I will never insult your intelligence. And we form this relationship of understanding that I, I care about you. I know you care about me. And then we can go and accomplish missions together that we otherwise couldn't. In other words, I can ask her to help me help others, knowing full well that she truly is willing to do it. We're not going to have to force her. We're not going to have to we'll call it manhandle her. We're not going to have to create a fear in her mind forcing submission. Uh, that is an obstruction, definitely an irritation. That is not what we want to do. And understanding these laws of nature will help us abide in those very laws so that we can present to the horse the best version of ourself. And then when we do that, she sees, hey, you're really trying. I want to be a part of that. And then she gets to develop a conscious awareness of being a part of something that she otherwise would not out in the wild. And that is a beautiful, unique relationship, mind, body, spirit complex of us both. We're both ascending in conscious awareness. We're both becoming love. We're both becoming peace, We're both becoming tranquility. And then that starts to grow stronger between us. And then when we invite someone else in, they get to feel that, they get to be a part of that, and then they can resonate with it. And then they can understand it. They get a sense of it. They get an understanding, growth and development, conscious awareness. All five areas of their life get changed and enhanced. Health, wealth, relationships, happiness, spirituality. And it's unique to them and the horse. Unique to them and the universe. It's a beautiful thing. I'm really happy to be a part of it. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Just wanted to make it for you. Level two, uh, establish communication. This is how I do it. This is how I show other people to do it. And then the horses truly draw to that because they have an understanding of what you're doing. They actually get a voice to say, this is how I like to be treated. This is how I want to respond to your questions. This is how I appreciate you asking me rather than forcing me. And it's a beautiful, beautiful relationship. Anyway, Cinnamon, my little Mustang, she did a very good job. I'd like to thank you, Cinnamon. And uh, we'll bring you the next video, which is level three, transitioning from the ground to their back. We bring level one and level two into that. The only difference is we're up there in the saddle. We're moving around. I have five obstacles that we will begin to play on and start to develop a communication with me on her back and a deeper understanding uh, in the relationship of each other, in the feedback loop. Whatever I think and do, I become. Whatever she thinks and does, she becomes. We can create the relationship we want and develop it over time. Law of compensation takes the time it takes. And then we'll go into level four, which is accomplishing obstacles together. And then level five, real world focus riding, where we have a strong, circular, fluid feedback loop together between she and I. I observe her. She observes me. I present things. She gives feedback, she presents things, and it's the circular feedback loop of information or energy that is transferring between she and I, and we're moving through Earth together. We're accomplishing uh, challenges that may come up. And in each challenge we accomplish together, and we, on the law of polarity, we find comfort when there's discomfort, we find joy when there's lack of joy. <laughs> and those are growth and development together in a relationship, and that's life enrichment. That's what we're after. We're manifesting a reality. We're creating something that doesn't exist, and this is how we start. This is how we do it.
So this level three video I bring you next will be transitioning from the ground to her back, asking questions with pressure, release as a thank you, and then uh, we'll go into level four and five, and I'll show you those videos too. So thanks for watching. Oh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm getting new. I'm new at this YouTube stuff and how to like grow the channel and whatnot. I really appreciate your help and appreciate you being here. If you have any questions on any topic that I, I discuss, we can dive deeper on that and I'd be happy to. Um, I always love seeing pictures of your horses. So if you want to post a picture in the comments, if you can, I'm not sure you can. Uh, I'm learning this YouTube. Any advice, I'm welcome to it. Uh, I, I love sharing my passion of horsemanship, especially when there's a purpose of helping someone else become better, faster, stronger, uh, more efficient, more effective at the game of life. You know, how to not get hurt, how to benefit. And that's what it's all about, guys. Uh, really happy to bring something so unique and valuable to you and um, having a lot of fun doing it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Cinnamon. Don't go to sleep. We're almost done.